I wish to thank the United States Institute for Peace uh, for the opportunity it has provided me to speak uh, once again with the policy community uh, in Washington. As Andrew mentioned, uh, I've been here before and was finding uh, these sort of discussions uh, fruitful and engaging, and hopefully we will have one such discussion today. Uh, my country, Pakistan, as you all know, has been in the global news uh, for a variety of reasons. A country of more than 220 million people armed with nuclear weapons, hosting the world's largest refugee population for nearly four decades, and located in a region that has been in ferment for long. It is a country that has been struggling with democracy. Dictatorships have struck on and off and destabilized the country. Dictatorships have sorry. In a country in a, in a country whose uh, tribal regions were once known, uh, unfortunately now, as the uh, petri dish of international terrorism, the Tora Bora caves that sheltered the world's most dreaded terrorists for years are a few kilometers away from our borders. For many years now, Pakistan's peace has depended also on the security situation in Afghanistan. The decision by President Trump to unilaterally withdraw from Afghanistan has created a new wave of uncertainty in the region, which poses yet another challenge to Pakistan. Just like last week, the New York Times wrote a highly insightful and powerful editorial in the end of the war in Afghanistan. I'm sure many of you would have read it and realized its implications for our region. The New York Times editorial calls it negotiated capitulation by international forces. It's not difficult to visualize the consequences of capitulation. Pakistan is a nation that has for decades struggled for peace and stability. Our people have lost much and gained little. They have sacrificed much and demanded little. The ethos of our people is democratic. They have poor dictatorship. That is the one major reason why the dictatorship has repeatedly been imposed on Pakistan. It has never stuck. It has not gained root in our country, and that's something to be thankful for. During the last three decades, Pakistan has had three general elections in 2008, and once again in 2013, and yet again most recently in 2018. In the run-up to the 2008 election that brought the Pakistan People's Party into power, my mother, Shahid Mohamma Benazir Bhutto, the Muslim world's first female prime minister, quite selected prime minister of Pakistan, uh, embraced martyrdom, martyrdom at the hands of militants and extremists while struggling for the restoration of democracy and uh, challenging the mindset, mindset of violent extremism. Pakistan. The 2008 Pakistan People's Party government was the first democratically elected government in the history of Pakistan to complete its constitutionally mandated five year period. We have recently had the third peaceful transfer of power, and they say that three is the magic number, after which shaking the foundations of a fledgling democracy becomes all the more difficult. This is something we are counting on because it's taken a lot for us to get here today. In a country like Pakistan, beset with militancy, a history of dictatorship, and a restive region, the holding of three democratic elections in a row, peaceful transfer of power from one elected government to another, and again, and again, to, should not be dismissed as insignificant. These are significant achievements indeed. I'm reminded of what Winston Churchill had said. Democracy is the worst form of government except for all the other forms that have been tried from time to time. And indeed, it is with this thought in mind that we choose to fight the system from within the system. We choose to compromise personal interests for national interests. We choose to rise above 
and this is why, despite the knowledge the previous election was a clearly compromise and electoral manipulation was at its peak, we still chose to accept the outcome with serious reservations. Not only that, we also convinced the rest of the opposition parties in Pakistan, <coughs> all of whom had outright rejected the result and as a consequence uh, refused to become members of this parliament, uh, to take back this position, to become members of parliament in the larger interest of the system because the People's Party has always been committed to institution building. However, there are still serious challenges to our democracy. Democracy is not merely holding of periodic elections and transferring power from one party to another. More than 50